Well, as you can see, I've scribed the profile of the table edge onto the side of this piece of scrap cherry. And as you can see, the bottom is a quarter inch uh, radius around over, and then the top I'm going to use a sort of a core box bid and make several passes to get into that cove there and then I'll finish it off with hand planes since it's all straight. Well you can see with the uh, cove bit and the round over uh, there's not much material left. A little bit on the top there uh, to round over and a little bit on the bottom. So I use my hollow plane uh, to do that. I'm using the uh, core box to uh, put a cove onto the top. Putting the uh, quarter inch round over on the bottom. And then if 
that doesn't work for you, you could use a standard one. This comes in those three piece sets and you can fit it in the code to take out material, uh, although it doesn't work too well for this particular shape. So we'll have this uh, cleaned up in no time. So today we're uh, filming with a new, whole new uh, camera and a uh, whole new microphone system. So hopefully the sound is better than it's been in the past. So what we've got here is I'm starting to work on the baby butt corners on the uh, table. And you can see this is a practice one here. And the ones that are uh, on the points where the table is not separated are pretty straightforward. Um, I have a pattern for that and they fit on there just fine. The problem with it is, is where the joint is, where the two halves come together, you've got a line that's uh, 3 16 of an inch over here where there's an overlap. So the underneath part is 3 16 in this particular case to the uh, right and the other is 3 16 to the left. So creating a symmetrical baby butt uh, was difficult. So uh, I've got this one that looks pretty good. So I uh, made a, a template from a practice one and then I'm transferring that template to the, um, the good table which is right there and you can see that template and then of course you have to put a uh, baby butt on the bottom too so I've got a template for that so I'll turn it over and then the, you saw out uh, with a uh, coping saw or a jigsaw or something you saw at the curves on the bottom and then up here this has to be carved so you'll see that in a little bit so I'm starting to work on the hinges for the top and uh, what I did is I laid out the uh, baby butts but I want the table to be exactly uh, where the two halves to be exactly where they're going to sit while I'm carving them so I decided to put the hinges on next uh, so that I can be assured that the uh, two halves will be exactly where I want them. So I have these hinges here that I got from Horton Brass and uh, they're about three inches long and an inch and a half wide and uh, the way that you're supposed to install the hinges is the barrel here is not supposed to be seen so I've got it set back a sixteenth of an inch here so that it will fit into a pocket uh, when this is flush and then this part the long part here will be on the other half of the table and will tip down so you you won't see the barrel because it'll be underneath here so that's how it's laid out and I've got a marking knife here and uh, I've just kind of laid, uh, I put the pencil lines on there so that I can see what I'm doing and then uh, lay the hinge on here uh, for size and then uh, use the, the marking knife uh, to cut. So now we have it uh, marked out and where's my router plane? So then to so first I'll route it uh, to uh, a depth where the hinge plate will fit flush with the board. Then I've got to cut uh, with a chisel a trough which will allow the barrel of the hinge to fit down in there and then the whole thing be flush. So the first thing I'm going to do is use my router here and so we'll do a little routing. So now I'm routing the uh, hinge mortises. So it takes a, a little, uh, since you're going cross grain here, you can only take a small shaving at a time with the router plane, but it, it goes along pretty quick.
and I do both of them at the same time, it saves me the work of having to adjust the plane for both of them. And then periodically I stop to check the depth and the width. This is slightly small and it's getting close to, to deep enough. We'll have to route that edge out a little bit. This one's perfect and obviously the same depth at the moment. So we have a little more, a little, about a 30 second to go. Well, I got the hinges on now, as you can see here, and uh, I'll take them off again. Uh, I use the old screws because they get chewed up taking them on and off. So the last time I put them on, I'll use the new screws and try not to chew them up. But uh, it's, it's pretty good. Let's see which is which. So... This is how it would hang, like that, uh, and um, it's a little tight. I'd have it, rather have it a little tight than a little loose, but uh, this corner here could be taken off a little more in here, so when I take it apart, it'll be easier to plane. Uh, I could take a little off of this corner, too. But it uh, seems to fit pretty good. And uh, so now I've cut the uh, baby butts on the bottom. If you can see there, they're all cut all the way around. So I want to leave it together so that I can carve it uh, while, it's, while it's together and making sure that the baby butts look good on the two corners that... Uh, that come apart here. So uh, we're going to work on that and uh, then I'm going to take it apart, adjust it, and I think we're done with the top other than sanding. So I'm carving the last of the baby butts here <clears throat> and this one is on uh, the fixed part of the t table and uh, it's a little different than other baby butts that I've done in that uh, the uh, side ones, the ones where it, uh, the tabletop hinges, aren't symmetrical and uh, kind of dictate the, the size and the shape. And what I did is I took the, did those first and I took the shape and transferred it to the side so that they match. Uh, so what you can see here uh, is a cove coming in has to go around this curve and then go in and likewise this is a quarter round here and a quarter round on the bottom and that has to come around and go to the center so it's coming along uh, I have a video that I did on how to do this uh, in detail step by step uh, earlier and I'll put it in the link when I post this video so this video is not about carving or how to carve uh, a baby butt because you probably wouldn't want to reproduce this particular shape on straight cornered ones. You can see I'm going down and across the grain here because it's hard to have a small this is a three and I'd have to come around here like this to get it to go in. All right, so there it is, the completed top and the completed body. So we've got our baby butt corners on here and this is about how it will look most of the time. And um, it's not fastened to the top. This is still a hair tight, although I may want to leave it that way. And then this should come out here and support it.
and you're now seeing a first because I haven't even done that before but it seems to work pretty good I don't think I'll mess with it at all you can see the metal pin holding that leg uh, swing leg in uh, ultimately I'll put in a wooden uh, pin a quarter inch uh, pin through it and then uh, whoa slightly tipping so we have to we have to take a look at that because we wouldn't want it to rock back and forth but um, otherwise I'd say it's ready so I adjusted the uh, hinge a little bit so I'll have, it'll have to be a little tricky uh, but it's now flush and uh, it looks pretty good sitting up here. This uh, leg, even in the, the drawing, comes out only at 45 degrees and comes uh, flush with the edge here. So that's how it's designed. And then, of course, it, it swings back and the, this side, the handkerchief falls down. So uh, looks like we got a winner and uh, time for the finishing. <laughs>